Figurized Standard Amplified, the legendary Exodia Incarnate. Hey guys, this is Future Van here. I'm re-uploading this video because I want to address some things about this kit. After doing some research and talking to some of you, including one really angry fan, I've concluded that I believe my own kit may be a lemon, which might be the reason why it falls apart so easily. I mean, look, even just rotating the hands pops off the arms. Considering how many of you have said Exodia was quite sturdy, I could just only conclude that mine's defective. That and some small details were missing because I'm a goof. And of course, that may have affected your opinions on this kit, so I believe it was best to remove the old video and update it. Sorry about that, I didn't want to give you guys a bad perspective of this kit due to my own misinformation. But back to the regular scheduled program. Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we have the Figura Center Amplified, the legendary Exodia Incarnate. Yeah, that's a long name. That's what the box says. This kit is from Bandai and it was released in August of 2023. It cost me $72.99 Canadian just because I pre-ordered it. If not, it'd be $79.99. And I'm gonna say it now, definitely not worth it. Should be at least half price. And you'll understand soon. So let's get this review started. This is the second figure I sent Amplified Yu-Gi-Oh! kit to be released. Following the Blue Eyes White Dragon. A very beautiful kit that I got three of. Exodia first appears in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime as Exodia, the Forbidden One, summoned by our main protagonist, Yugi Moto, in the very first episode. And watching that first episode made me fall in love with Yu-Gi-Oh. Too bad the card game now revolves around text boxes as large as paragraphs. And I already can't read, so I can't get back into that. But I digress. Firstly, let's take a look at the box. We got a very good looking box art. This illustration looks very badass. On the side of the box, we got the model kit itself unpainted, as well as all the runners. And yeah, you can see there's not that many runners, so it's gonna be a pretty easy build. On the other side of the box, we got the figure painted up. There are some images and text boxes trying to highlight the unique parts of this kit, including the chains, the colored separation for the face, and also the size. Because Exodia itself is pretty big. And pretty much, that's the only thing it got going for it. It's a big thing with chains. That and the lack of poses highlighted here, uh, doesn't look that good for the kit. Yeah, I'm not walking in here with the most positive mindset, so let's take a look at the kit itself. This is the figure I sent Amplified Exodia, fully panel lined, and all the stickers used. First positive of the kit, there's only four stickers. Two on the little itty bitty eyes on its itty bitty face that I completely butchered putting it on, and two on the chin. Yeah, I never really realized how small Exodia's actual face is, at least compared to the rest of his body. But for a kit this size to have this little stickers, that's a win. And you know what else? This kit has a lot of panel lining opportunities, which I highly recommend you doing. If you're unconvinced, here it is side by side with a non-panel line part. And you can see it's night and day. It brings out a lot of detail onto the kit. Even the runes on this part, just panel lining it with some brown panel lining marker, looks absolutely amazing. So no if ands or buts, panel line this kit. And as shown earlier on the box, there's not that many runners, so it's actually a very beginner friendly build. Just don't buy it at that price though. After finishing the build, you have one leftover runner. It's the runner for the polygaps, so you're not going to need it anymore, so you can just toss it away. End result is a pretty good looking kit that doesn't leave too many bad nub marks. And I can say that I'm a big fan of the amplified redesign, especially when you compare it with its anime adaptation. The textures and panel lining opportunities help break up all that light brown. In addition to the crappy gold they used, it does add some color to the kit. The colored part separation is also pretty good, as you can see from the red parts on the head and the gold parts on the chest. Now in addition with some good old panel lining, you can turn this boring brown looking model into something that's pretty eye catching. If the muscles weren't eye catching enough, I mean like look at them, you know Exodia hits the gym. I mean look at those washboard abs. And check out those back muscles, they're molded on very well. I mean look at that muscle separation. Aside from normal appearance, you may have also noticed these chains attached to them. They're very easy to assemble and they're a cool gimmick, but they are the absolute worst things on this kit. Due to the size of the opening of each link, and with each set of chains containing 6 links, they are very prone to falling off, whether you're just holding the kit, moving it, posing it, or even looking at it. They also sometimes get in the way of placing the feet, but that's easily corrected. Aesthetically, really cool for the appearance, but I absolutely hate it. Though still, I still love the appearance. Wonder if the articulation is as equally good. TLDR? No it isn't. Starting with that large head and small face, the head is able to tilt up and down, and the neck is also able to move up and down. Unfortunately, there's no side to side head tilt, and due to the design of the head, it can't do a full 360. 
but you can decapitate it due to the weak head connection. Coming to the arm, the shoulder pauldron is able to move up and down ever so slightly. In addition, there's an extra joint near where the shoulder is, allowing the bulky shoulder to internally externally rotate. And the arm is also prone to falling off if you play around with it. Here's a top down view of that internal external rotation. As for abduction, the arm is able to be raised this high, which is mostly inhibited by the big bulky shoulder and head. There's also an upper bicep 360, and doing this will often twist the arm right off. Or in this scenario, the other arm came off. I now understand why Exodia comes in pieces. There's a double joint on the elbow, allowing it to have a pretty good range of motion, though it exposes this hollowed area over here that doesn't look good. Next, we have the hand, which is unfortunately not on a ball joint, so it can only 360 spin. Also forgot to mention this before, there's a hinge joint on the hands, allowing a slight bend to the wrist. And my god is that a wasted potential that these giant fingers can't move. Coming to the upper torso, which is the only thing that can move here, it can move side to side and 360 rotate. Only cool thing is you get to see more of his abs. Oh, yeah! As for ab crunch and up and I guess beheading it, there is a small ab crunch and back extension. Now the lower portion of the torso does allow it to 360 rotate, the hip armor does get in the way. This is a minor issue because you're never really- Oh, there goes the left arm. As I was saying, it's probably an issue you'll never actually have to face. Finally coming to the legs, Ixodi has a pathetic split. He should dedicate some of his time at the gym to actually working on his stretches. Cause this range of motion is trash. Barely 90 degrees leg raise, and it's even worse going to the rear. The upper thigh can at least 360 rotate without falling off, and the knee bend is weak sauce. Lastly we have the ankle which is only able to point up and down, but don't apply too much pressure or yeah. Lastly the ankle could 360 rotate, at least, oh no it still pops off. And the scene is just from the articulation, it's not even the shake test yet. Future fan here just pointing out my kid is probably 11, many other people have said theirs are pretty good, so yours probably won't be as bad, hopefully. So due to the size and bulk of this thing, it has pretty limited articulation. Unfortunately, this affects a lot of the posing. And as for extras and accessories, unfortunately we got nothing. Not even an action based connector. Which is unfortunate, cause you know what this kit would benefit from? Closed fists! <laughs> Just so you could smash everything with those giant muscles. Also an energy effect part. Would be cool. Now because my kit is a lemon, there's a self destruct function. Remember, I do this so you don't have to. When you tell Exodia to obliterate, it definitely obliterates itself. And that's why in the card game it comes in pieces. And if you're wanting for height, the Exodia stands around 10 inches or 25.4 centimeters, with a wingspan of 11.5 inches or around 29 centimeters, give or take. As for size comparison, here it is next to the Entry Grade Arc 72, Master Grade Arc 72, Figure Eye Standard Amplified Blue Eyes White Dragon, and a fellow bulky boy, the Figure Eye Standard Amplified Machine Dramon. Next we got Haro, Doraemon, DK, an F-00 phone stand, a turtle neck brace for when you fly in the plane, and a high and master model Gojulus. And for shelf presence it's a pretty big kit, next to the blue eyes right here it still sticks out like a sore thumb and it takes up a lot of space. Now should you actually get this kit? Well after finding out that my kit might be defective, eh, I actually could recommend it if it's at a half price. There's not that many runners so it's an easy build. The overall design looks very good. Due to the bulk of this kit, the articulation sucks. The chains though looking pretty cool are a huge headache to deal with. And for this price it makes absolutely no sense. It definitely needs some more extra accessories, some hand options, some effect parts. If you want one, try to get it at a lower price. Just hope that yours is actually stable and not hand grenade like mine's. Also the lack of posing, you can only do so much with the open hands, you know? Like this is the only pose I actually like, and that requires three blue eyes. Now if what everyone says was true and theirs is actually very sturdy compared to mine's, I would highly recommend it then, at half price. But that's my own personal opinion. Thanks for watching my video, I hope you like it, I enjoy making it. Would you get this kit? Why or why not? Let me know. Though my own kit is very explodey, the appearance is on point, so I have high hopes for the Black Luster Soldier. If you guys watched my older review and also watched this one, I thank you very much. And let me know if your opinions have changed. Weirdly enough, it makes it better knowing that other people's exodias aren't this bad. Thanks again for watching, and remember, panel line this kit. Take care, bye!